Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel today. And you know, this is a good episode of Overlord. And a strangely funny one at that to me. I think, guys, I think it's so hilarious how I'm just going around like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to be a nice guy over here, I'm going to really make people admire me. And everyone around the world is just like, yo, this guy's terrifying, he's going to kill everyone, he's so intimidating. <laughs> that shit is so funny to me. <laughs> this episode was funnier than it needed to be. But nah, I, I like the Warrior King a lot after this episode. You know, I think he's a, he's a dope character. And he said he would become his subordinate and join Nazarick, actually. So that's pretty cool. But enough of that. Let's get into episode four of Overlord today. Because it was a pretty good one. So our episode begins, actually, immediately after Albedo leaves from our previous episode. And we get to see Ayn's point of view. You know, we've got the point of view of Albedo and what she's been doing these past couple episodes. So now we get to see Papa Bone Daddy's perspective. And he's deep in thought, you know? He's thinking to himself, like, I don't want to be evil, you know? But we don't... We still don't know about the world item that's out there that took control of Shaltir before. We have to be cautious. But I don't want to be a dictator to people. I haven't gone against my subordinates' wishes for world domination because that's how they feel. But we even get a flashback to the previous episode where he says he wants to create a utopia. He wants to show mercy upon the people of his kingdom. Really showcasing that Ainz has not lost his humanity just yet. He wants to be merciful to his people. You know, he wants to make a world as sweet as honey, as he says himself. And that really shows where he's at as a character right now still. Again, he has not lost his humanity. So he decides, I just need to advertise myself. You know, I need to put myself out there <laughs> and show all these adventures that I want to recruit. Like, hey... You want to come here, you know? I got a lot to offer you. <laughs> the carrot and the stick, as he says himself. So, he actually sneaks into the Empire with... What was his name? Einzak, uh, the Guildmaster. So they could go meet up with a promoter. And Einzak literally tells him, like, Your Majesty, you can't just come into other people's countries like this. This is like an international matter. He's like, and Einz is just like, nah, it's fine. I didn't want a royal welcome or anything like that. I'm, fr I'm friends with Jerknev, you know? <laughs> He's not gonna mind. <laughs> that shit is still so funny to me. But Einzak actually asks, asks him, All right, Majesty. Don't you think it's time for you to tell me what your plan is, what your idea is? And he tells him, like, I want to recruit adventurers. I want to explore the unknown. I want to create an institute for adventurers to grow. And that's when Einzak actually mentions to him that shouldn't you create an institute where you can start from scratch? Or you can nurture them from the very beginning of their lives. Kind of like the orphanage we saw in our previous episode. That you could raise them to be the kind of adventurers that you want. And I'm like, that's a good idea. I think I will set up an institution like that. And it's here that Einzek actually tells him, like, you know, I think a good way to promote something like that would be to fight in the Coliseum. You know, really showcase your ideas. Because that's like the biggest venue in the Empire is the Coliseum. So he's like, why don't you go there and promote yourself? Ein's like, that's a great idea too. And he really values Einzak's opinion, actually, because he's one of the only people that can give him like a negative response. Everyone in Nazarick would ne wouldn't even dare give him a negative response. They're all like, yes, sir, yes, sir. They're yes men. For as loyal and strong as they are, they're all yes men. And Einz needs someone next to him that can tell him, no, that's not a good idea at times. And Einzak actually mentions, like, I have a friend who's the promoter of the Warrior King, 
who is the strongest warrior king in history out of all eight generations of them. He is the strongest in history. And Ayn's like, set up a meeting with this promoter. I need to talk to him right now. We actually get a fun scene with Flunder in this episode, who, if you guys remember, was, I believe, the court mage for the Empire in our previous season. And this guy... <laughs> you know, Ayn's corrupted him. I say corrupted, but he really did corrupt him. And this guy is ridiculous. He's like, yeah, master, master, please. I've gathered all this information for you over the course of this time. But that sneaky, sneaky, clever emperor has surely known of my betrayal by now. And Ines is like, yes, yes, very good, very good. Here, as I promised, I bestow a little bit of my knowledge upon you. And Flunder basically just screams his pants right there. <laughs> He can't even read the book that Ainz gave him. And Ainz gives him a little eyeglass and he's able to decipher it. He's like, oh my lord, this is exactly what I've always wanted. You. Master, thank you. And Ainz's like, yeah, that's great. I uh, I need that back, by the way. I, I only have one of them. And he's like, but, but master, I can't read it without it. <laughs> you know, not even an important scene. I just found it kind of funny. So I wanted to tack that in. But it's here that Ainz actually meets with the promoter. Now, this promoter is a little more shrewd than he lets on to be. He instantly realizes that it's Ainz there with him, even though he has a disguise, which is just a mask, which I find hilarious at this point. The whole world knows what fucking Ainz looks like at this point. I don't think a mask is going to change that. But Ayn's just inspecting his wares while he's there. You know, they're being courteous with each other. And Ayn sees a certain sword there. And he's like, whoa, what are these, runes? And he's like, ah, it's expected of the Sorcerer King to know about runes. And Ayn's is like, wow, they have these in this world? Like, these are incredibly rare. Like, these wouldn't normally be here. And it turns out they're from the Elfin Nation, actually. The Elvin, my bad, not... The, no, not even that. The dwarf. My bad. Br total brain fart right there, guys. The dwarven nation, actually. So we might be visiting there soon. That's interesting. But they start talking. And Ainz tells him, like, all right, I want to fight the warrior king. And the promoter starts freaking out. Like, wait, what, what, why, what, 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 what? <laughs> why would you want to fight the warrior king? You know, you're a ruler of a nation. And Ayn's like, I want to use it as a promotion tool, you know? And then even as I said in my last episode, I, I literally said Ayn's is just going to go there like, oh, I heard he was strong, so I got curious. And he literally says that word for word in this scene. <laughs> I was dying of laughter. So like I said, guys, I'm not caught up to the light novel in this part, so I don't know what's happening. So this shit is really fun to me. <laughs> Ainz is just a really fun character still. Ev everyone in the world's telling him, die, die. And in his head, he's like, well, why is everyone so mean to me? <laughs> so, yeah, they set up a fight with the Warrior King. And Ainz actually swears in that instance that he is not going to use magic. And he puts a ton of limitations on himself, actually. Because we all know, guys, we're on the fourth season. We know like, if Ainz went in there and really fought this guy, he's he's killing him like that. Let's be real. <laughs> so they do. They set up a lot of restrictions, and they set up a fight for him with the Warrior King in the Coliseum. And once Ayn leaves, <laughs> the promoter actually talks to one of the beast people that's working there. And he says, what is your appraisal of the Sorcerer King? And... To me, it looked like a dude. It sounded like a dude in the maid outfit. But he, I'm going to assume it is. So if I'm wrong, don't fillet me in the comments. But I think he says that I'm terrified. Look at my hands. Look at my hands. And there's some big fucking hands. <laughs> there's some big ass hands. And he's like, he's extremely dangerous. And it's here we transition to the Coliseum. I just like this scene where the warrior king's talking to the promoter. And he's like, my friend, you've kept your promises for all these years. 
thank you for everything you've done. Like, he's walking off to go die and all that. I just, that shit is so funny to me, man. That everyone in the world, every time they face Ainz, they're like, I'm about to die. My last words are, I love you. And shit like that. It's like, come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, from their perspective, you see someone like Ainz walking down the street towards you. Like, what do you do? You know, you know, like, what do you do? <laughs> but we get into the ring, and Ainz and the Warrior King introduce themselves to each other. And Ainz is like, wow, I thought trolls actually made fun of people with very long names. And he's like, ah, you know a lot about trolls, huh? He's like, yes, yes, I do. I have to change my... I have to change my notions of what I think of trolls. And they actually start having a heart-to-heart -heart with each other. It's actually kind of nice, you know? They start laughing with each other. And I'm just like, all right, Warrior King, if I beat you, you need to become one of my subordinates. And he's like, all right, if you can beat me, I will become one of your subordinates. Which is dope. And they have a fight. And at, even with the restrictions, guys, come on. It ain't close. It's not close. Ainz is beating the hell out of him. He's beating him around left and right. He's even limited his use of magic items. So the staff he has, he used maybe one time and it went away. And then he borrowed these little daggers from Momin. Yeah, borrowed from Momin. <laughs> and they start fighting. And Ainz has definitely gotten the best of him. And Ainz tells him, remove your helmet, Warrior King. We're about to finish this in this last strike. I'd like to see your face. You know, trying to be an honorable warrior, as he is. And again, they have a heart-to-heart. -heart. And Ainz tells him, do you not have a technique that can turn the tables right now? Do you have a technique that you believe could beat me? If so, now is the time to use it. And the Warrior King's like, no, I don't have a technique. But I don't want to give up. <laughs> And they start fighting each other. And it turns out this motherfucker's a liar. He does have a technique. And he actually blind sides, blind sides Ainz for a second. Knocks him in the air. Knocks him around. Gets a couple good hits in, actually. But, of course, it doesn't really do too much to Ainz. And he's like, oh, I see. I've been fooled. <laughs> Idiot. I just, I love the whole time. The whole time they're fighting, that jerk Neff is just in the stands in his little box up there saying, Yo, Warrior King, get him, finish him, please, please finish him. <laughs> and even I'm just like, Hey, aren't we allied nations here? Why aren't you, why aren't you cheering for me? Aren't you a little worried about my safety? Because <laughs> I love it. I really do love it. So the Warrior King, on the bri on the edge of defeat, asks Ainz, like, am I weak? Am I weak? You came in here. You put all these restrictions upon yourself. You've limited yourself to the extreme, and still you stand here so confidently. Am I weak? And Ainz tells him, you know, I put all these restrictions on myself. And if you're the strongest person in the Empire, I'm the strongest person in the world. And the Warrior King says, huh, he laughs at that, and tells Ainz, if that's true, show me a fraction of that strength. Show me what the top looks like. And Ainz's like, very well, I'll show you the, what, do you, what did he say? Like, the absolute bare minimum of absolute strength. And all Ainz really does is take off his physical limiters. All he does. So now the Warrior King's attacks that were kind of doing something before are just bouncing off him. Like Ainz is literally walking forward, taking these full brunt hits and not flinching in the slightest. And he literally just takes his little fucking dagger, basically, stabs it in the Warrior King, and he dies right then and there. Really showcasing just the absolute disparity between them and power. And in this scene, actually, Ainz, after killing him, takes a microphone and announces to everyone in the Coliseum, like, I have shown you all my strength here. I have come here to recruit 
a bunch of adventurers. I want to make an institution in my kingdom where adventurers can come and grow and become stronger. If you've ever been interested in exploring the unknown, you must come to my kingdom. I will turn you all into true adventurers. And a lot of people in the stands aren't even, they're like, they're not booing, but they're like, whoa, what's going on here? And I'm like, I'm even the master of death. I can control life and death as he brings the warrior king back to life, actually. And he leaves them all on that. Like, if you want to become a true adventurer, come to my kingdom. You will have the support of unimaginable power. <laughs> It's just so funny to me, guys. And in our final scenes of the episode, Ainz flies up to Jerknev and says, Forgive me for my rudeness, your majesty, but that was quite a great match. And he's about to leave, and Jerknev literally tells him, like, Wait! Sorcerer King, the Bahamuth Empire would like to become a vassal state of the Sorcerer Kingdom of Ainz Algon. And Ainz doesn't know what that means. He's like... But, your majesty, that would be... And then in his head, he's like, what, what does that even mean? <laughs> so he plays around it and he says, you know, we shouldn't discuss such matters in talks like this. You should really put it in writing and send it to me. <laughs> and he leaves like that. And Drukness attendants are literally like, your majesty, are you serious? That's crazy. Do you know what a vessel state would is? And he's like, I do, but we cannot defeat him. And this is the only way for us to stay alive. I might be the most unfortunate man in the world right now. And that's how our episode ends. Like, this episode was fun as hell, guys. It was really fun. At this point, I find it hilarious how the world just has all these misconceptions about Ainz. Like, they see him as one thing. And he is that one thing, to be fair. He's not like a pussy in disguise. He is definitely that one thing. He's definitely an overlord, as he says in this episode himself. But he's a nicer guy than people realize. Even in this episode, um, what's his name? Einzef even says, like, I'm surprised by the generosity of your majesty's heart. <laughs> so it's just really funny to see people freaking out. And I'm just like, oh, I'm just, I'm just trying to check stuff out <laughs> so you guys let me know what you thought of this episode down below you know this season of overlord has just been fun it's been fun and that's why i love this series so much but you if you have a different opinion let me know in the comments down below but that'll be it for today's episode you guys you know with Ainz just showing his overall superiority yet again and finally potentially gonna recruit some adventurers how do you think the story is gonna progress from here let me know down below. But until next time, guys, I hope you have a great day, week, month, and year. And until then, deuces, have a blessed day.